Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Thanks for watching Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage Vault Series. The Vault Series is a series of interviews that we shot starting back in 2004, two years before the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum opened to the public. If you like what you see, please be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Thanks for watching. Today's clip is with steel guitarist with Hank Williams Sr.'s The Drifting Cowboys Band, Don Helms. We did this interview with Don in my office at the first museum during the first year we were open, somewhere around 2006. Um, it's, if you're a, a Hank Sr. fan, you're, you're really going to enjoy this. To me, the, one of the high points of it is when he tells the real haunting story of the recording of Your Cheating Heart. I hope you enjoy it, Don Helms. We formed a little old band down in South Alabama, and we we play honky tonks on Saturday night and and stuff like that. And uh, so we was doing pretty good in a little club down there. We'd work about four days and be off two or three days. And and one of the guys knew had met Hank Williams, and Hank Williams was on the radio up at Montgomery, just him and his guitar. Hank Williams, the Drifting Cowboy. So he went up to Montgomery, and when he came back, well, he, he ran into Hank, and he said, Hank said, We're, I'm thinking about putting a band together. He said, why don't you talk to us? we got a band that's all ready together. And he said, well, get them up here, and we'll talk. So he came back down, and he said, would you guys like to go to work with Hank Williams? And I, I had heard Hank, but I'd never met him. I said, well, it probably wouldn't be any worse than this. So we left there and went up to Montgomery and met him at a at a music store where guys hang out. And uh, this long guy, tall guy, walked in and said, "Are y'all that band?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, I'm Hank Williams. Follow me." And we went into a, a hawk shop next door. And he said, "Jake, have you got any more of them blackjacks back there?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, "Give me five of them." And he took them billy clubs and passed them out and said, boys, if you're going to play me, you're going to need these. In uh, South Alabama, the latter part of World War II and a honky-tonk on Saturday night ain't the safest place to be. And so how old were you? About 16. Did you ever look back? Did you, was, that, was it from that, was it full tilt from then on? From then on. Yeah, we started working with Hank Williams and I worked with him a couple of years and and then I went into the service. Hank was uh, fixing to go to Shreveport. And he said, you want to go with me? I said, how much did it pay? And he told me, and I said, Hank, I'm making a lot more than that here. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you all this time, but if I ever go to that Grand Ole Opry, you're going with me. I said, okay, that's a deal. Hazel called him, wants you to call Hank Williams at Shreveport, and I did. And he said, you promised me that if I ever went to the Grand Ole Opry, you'd go with me. And I said, yeah. He said, well, have your butt up there next Friday night. We're, we're going to show them how it's done. And we did. And what instrument did you play? I, I played uh, steel. I know, but what actual instrument? What, what was your? Uh, what I was playing there was a Rickenbacker, a lap steel, a six-string lap steel, like, like Jerry Bird mm -hmm. played. Kind of a pan? One of those... Yeah, yeah. It was, um... They call it a frying pan thing? Well, it was before a frying pan. It was a, one of those black and white. It looked like a little guitar, mm -hmm. but it was a Rickenbacker. Right. And Jerry Bird played one of them, and I, I, I had one like that. That's what I was playing. Then I got a Fender, a double neck Fender, double eight. And uh, I was playing that. When, when I came to Nashville, I had just gotten that, but I still had the Rickenbacker. And uh, when I first recorded, it, I recorded with Ernest Tubb before I did Hank Williams. Because we we played the Grand Ole Opry with Hank that first first Saturday night. And then we left to go on tour and, and the first date we played was on Sunday in Middletown, Ohio, I believe it was. And on Monday we went into Cincinnati to do a session that was already scheduled. And uh, Jerry Bird played the steel on it and uh, and I got to watch that. That's the first studio that I was ever in. And uh, I was very impressed by all of that. So that 
Hank recording there meant that he wouldn't record again for another four or five months. Well, immediately on playing on the opera, they started booking us on tour with Ernest Tubb and his band. And Ernest didn't have a steel player at that time, and he asked me if I would fill in with him, and I said, yeah. And so I, I played, and so Ernest would record before Hank did, and so he asked me to play on his session, and, and I did, and I, the very first song that I ever recorded was Ernest Tubb, Letters Have No Arms, and three other songs, I'll Take a Back Seat for You, Unfaithful One, and then the next time that Hank recorded, I was on that, and uh, we did Long Gone Lonesome Blues, Why Don't You Love Me Like You Used To Do, My Son Calls Another Man Daddy, and I forgot what the other song was, but two or three of those were hits. And, uh, and uh, I, I started doing, from then on, I did everything that Hank recorded. And so what was your progression of instruments? You said you got the Fender 8, we played Baltimore, Maryland for a week at a theater. And one day about the middle of the week, a guy came in and said, I've come to trade guitars with you. I, I want that guitar that played on Long Gone on some Blues. I said, well, that's it there. I said, what kind of trade you talking about? And he said, come here, I'll show you. And he opened this thing up, and boy, that was the prettiest guitar I ever seen. Smelled good. Now, you know how, like a new car, you know. And uh, I said, what kind of trade you got in mind? He said, I'm going to trade with you. You give me $200 in that guitar. I said, man, I, I don't have $200. He said, you got 100 I said, yeah. So I, I said, you realize now that I'm going to have to play this the rest of the day because I'll have to take it to the room tonight and put the kind of strings on it that I have to have to get the sound that I want. So he stood around and waited for me to finish that day, and then he took the guitar and was going with it, and I took the old Gibson console grand that I still play today. Took it up to the room, put some different strings on it, and I started playing it, and I still play it today. What kind of amplifier did you use? Back then, I was using a Fender when I, when I was with Hank. Fender Never what, Pro. Fender Pro? Mm-hmm, 15 inch. Jensen speak. What studios did you play with Hank at? Castle in Nashville. It was in the old Tulane Hotel. And uh, two engineers from WSM Radio, Carl Jenkins and uh, let's see what is the other guy's name, Aaron Shelton. They two engineers and they put the studio together and and they had a suite there and and. They just made it into a recording studio, and that's where a lot of people did a lot of the Red Foley hits and the Ernest Tubb and uh, Hank Williams Lefty. So, the, so like your cheating heart and all that was recorded mm -hmm. at Castle mm -hmm. in downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. It's the hotel is not there anymore. It's a parking lot now. It was called the Tulane Tulane Hotel, mm -hmm. and the studio was Castle. Yeah, Nashville was called the radio station was the Air Castle of the South, and they, they just use that handle. Was that WSM? Mm-hmm. Was, was the Air Castle of the South? WSM, the Air Castle of the South. I mean, and um, so uh, that one, was Owen Bradley affiliated with that? And at that time he wasn't, but uh, Owen Bradley had the staff orchestra, the WSM staff orchestra at that time, and and Harold Bradley, his brother, played guitar. And when you were in the session with uh, doing a session with Hank Senior, what was the what was a typical session like? How did it start out? And and you know, uh, was there a producer, or did y'all just do it, or did Hank do it? Fred what? Rose was always kind of he was always on hand for advice if you if Hank needed any advice, and uh, so Hank leaned on Fred a lot. He, he thought Fred Rose was the greatest writer in the world, and and Fred had a lot of confidence in Hank, and so they got along pretty good most of the time. And uh, so Hank would come in, and he'd, and he'd always start by saying, this first one goes like this, and he'd sing a couple of lines. Somebody'd come up with an intro, and how we're we gonna end this thing, you know, stuff like that. 
fiddle, you play in the middle, and so and so. And that was about the extent of it. So there wasn't really a dedicated producer, and there wasn't a range, but y'all just did it. He had the raw song. Yeah, he just he probably had it written down. He just put it up there and sang from that from that copy, and uh, we just learned the learn the tune and and play it. Do you have a favorite? Coco Hart was my favorite of all the Hank Williams songs. Hank came back into Nashville. I hadn't seen him since he had been expelled from the Grand Ole Opry, except that on that record session. He came in and we did uh, four songs. We did Collider, and we did uh, Take These Chains From My Heart. And we did one called I Could Never Be Ashamed of You. And he said, this next one goes like this. And he sang a couple of lines. He said, Don, give me something. So I gave him a little old intro, and he sang it all the way through. And we, we played it all the way through. Nobody made a mistake bad enough to have to do it again. And I never saw him alive again. The song was Your Cheating Heart. We played it only once. So what you hear on that record had no rehearsal. We just played it one time through, and, and that, the proof is on the record. Where were you? When he died. Charleston, West Virginia, and Canton, Ohio. I went, the promoter of that show called me just before Christmas and said, I've got Hank Williams booked in Charleston on New Year's Eve, Canton, Ohio on New Year's Day. And if he does real good, I think he's going to be able to come back to the Grand Ole Opry. Will you do me a favor? And he said, you can ride up with me. But if you ride up there, take your guitar, play behind him and encourage him, he said, I appreciate it. I said, okay, I'll do that. And I rode up there with him, and Hank didn't make the Charleston date, and we, we didn't make the Charleston. It's, we got into an icing condition and weather. And uh, so we went on up to um, Canton and checked in the hotel. And the next morning I got up and had breakfast and I went to the auditorium and the promoter, Mr. Bamford, was already at the auditorium. He'd gone over to check the box office and the tickets and all that. And, and he met me at the door to the dressing room and said, we've got a bad problem. Brother Hank Williams didn't make it. He died in route capsized me pretty good. So there went my best friend, my, my source of income. So I thought, now what? But when the show went on, the, the guy, the DJ who was the uh, uh, MC of the show took a mic and went out in front of the curtain and uh, the whole cast got behind the curtain and uh, played and, and sang, I Saw the Light. And you could hear people weeping in the audience when he made the announcement that Hank had died. Some of them had already heard it on the radio, but the ones who had, they just, you know, in awe. Where'd you go? Went back to Nashville and picked Miss Hazel up and we drove to Montgomery, Alabama, in the city auditorium where the funeral was held. The casket was down in front of the stage, and we were on the stage, the musicians and the singers, uh, Ernest Tubb, Roy Aker, Webb Pierce, uh, just all, all the biggies, you know, Red Foley. And they sang and I played. And from where I stood, I was looking right down on Hank Williams. And that's, that's the most unusual predicament that I was ever in. I, would, I hope I never have to do that again.